Okay, my friends, Roger once again going against everybody. This is Nokia Bell Labs. Well, discovery of the Big Bang, and this is literally hilarious. I mean, honestly, it's literally hilarious. Now, what they did was a long time ago, they tried to do a radio astronomy. All right, what does that mean? Light and radio waves come off of luminous bodies, glowing bodies in space. So they were going to point it out and look for these signatures of different bodies in space. And when they did, they figured they're going to see absolutely nothing whatsoever. And then they're going to see every now and then something like this, which would indicate a planet or, or, or a star or something. But in, what happened was they see these little tiny bumps all over the place. And what that equates to is a three degree temperature from absolute zero. So down here would be absolute total 100%, no energy whatsoever. And here they have three degrees worth of energy, three above absolute zero, extremely, extremely cold. Well, the reason they're getting this particles is because everything in space gives off particles. Every sun, every luminous body, they go somewhere, but they're small and they're very, they're very lightly impacting because they're so far away. So they only get these little tiny impacts, but they're all the time coming through. Now listen to what they have to say. We began with radio noise that we couldn't explain. At first, we thought it came from our 20-foot horn antenna. The horn was designed and built at Bell Laboratories for satellite communications research. But we were using it temporarily for radio astronomy. Uh, radio astronomy, like I said, all they're doing is pointing it out and seeing if they're getting any pulses coming back. And no matter where they looked, they were getting these pulses. So they said, oh, that's got to be from the Big Bang. Totally wrong. We tried to locate it in the horn, and then out in space. For Bell Labs scientists Arnold Penzias and Robert Wilson, that tiny bit of noise sparked an all-out search. Two years after their search began, they found its source. An unexpected bit of warmth, just three degrees above absolute zero. All that is is the light that's coming from every other luminous body in the universe just sort of diminished in the what they call the vacuum of space. Not vacuum, it's obviously not a vacuum. That fills every corner of space. Their discovery confirmed the Big Bang theory of the explosive origins of the universe. Arno Penzias describes those origins. All right, get ready, because this is going to be the silliest thing you ever heard. Billions of years ago, all the matter of the universe, a compressed, hot, dense, primordial energy soup, exploded. Every particle of light and energy rushing away from every other particle. All right, it was, there was nothing there, but it exploded from nothing. So everything is going away from everything else. And now it's going away, and it continues to speed up as it goes away. And now they say it's going so fast, it's going faster than the speed of light, which they say nothing can exceed. It's absolute nonsense. After a few seconds of expansion, the universe cooled to three billion degrees, and the particles began to combine with one another. The universe went on expanding and cooling for several hundred thousand more years until the temperature dropped to the point where atoms could be formed. Atoms later fell together slowly to form the giant gas clouds of hydrogen and helium. The clouds eventually collapsed under their own weight to form young galaxies. Billions of stars were born in billions of galaxies. The universe continues to expand, increase in size by hundreds of thousands of miles a second. Hundreds of thousands of miles a second. It's, it's, it exceeds the speed of light now. The heat of the fireball continues to cool. Today, the background temperature is three degrees, and the distances and velocities of the galaxies that we now observe are all that remain of the Big Bang. Well, it's wrong. Okay, my wonderful friends that can think deeply, so deeply that they can think into the sub 
atomic range. And what is the subatomic range? Well, these are atoms. And if you get smaller, you are subatomic. And then what is in that subatomic range? Well, there's electrons, and then they say there's protons and neutrons. I say no. There is only electrons. And what does an electron consist of? Is it strictly a negative particle? I say no. It consists of this, the muon and the electron neutrino. The muon neutrino is, does nothing. They're attached together. But when they slam into something, the muon neutrino has no value, no explosive value. It's what they call a carrier boson. This explodes when it slams and causes a shower of particles. This is what they call an electron neutrino. Now, they are unable to find these because CERN and the rest of them are starting with extremely large molecules, first of all, or the new x-ray device they're looking into, and I'll show you that in a minute, um, they're not really understanding how to accelerate these particles. Using a Venturi is the most efficient, effective way, very, very simple. All right, I'm going to show you something. These are cosmic rays. Now, these are chunks of matter. These are not photons, and they hit the atmosphere and they do this and they create these different colored patterns because they are a chunk so it it decays in a, into different colored stripes now we're doing something different we're using a laser and which a laser is light it's not chunks this is chunks so th what they are looking for is um uh, hold on one second. Let me get down to where it makes sense. Give me one second. All right. You saw that we're talking about the speed of the light, and it says right here, the, and we're talking about the Cherenkov radiation. It says while the speed of light in a vacuum may be fixed and immutable at exactly this speed of light, the speed of light in a medium is always slower. No, it's not. We sped it up. Okay, here's the electron flood theory. You saw those balls th that were what I consider to be photons or even atoms. But this is pulse red laser. Bip, 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 coming through here. I'm going to expand this up and I'll take one shot at a time. Okay, this right here, my friend, is nothing more than a pulse red construction laser. Bip, 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 bip. Now, we see it as a wave. However, it's not a wave. That is a ball. And that dot right there is what the ball is constructed of. And that dot is, is, is a little photon. But it controls an absolutely enormous region around it as it concusses through that because it has, has influence magnetically over a huge region. That's what it looks like in the center. I'll show you in a second. Now, when it comes through the Venturi, okay, and that is the Venturi, right here. What that Venturi looks like is this. Well, let me show you the, the big picture first, and then I'll give you a little detail. Now, coming at this Venturi, and this Venturi is right here, is a big ball here, a round metal tube and a metal tube here with a slot so it makes an airplane wing so what does it do the pulse red laser is coming in here well it owns a huge region like this but the particles only tiny and half of it has no power whatsoever the black and half of it has a lot of power the red explodes when it hits that restriction all of this concusses with all of the other red particles the black ones say, I'm getting the hell out of there. They just, they just back off this way, and they back all the way off around. And as it restricts into that funnel, which is the Venturi, everybody crushes. These guys are now literally a ball of redness. The black one walked away. The black, and we'll see them. They, well, we can see them. They're right there, but I'll show you in much better detail. And then they're all around the bottom, but not whatsoever in the middle. So this is what happened here. You see? It's stretched out. That, that wave is now, the particle has moved. And here's what the particle looks like. 
See that? That's what the product looks like. Just before it goes through the Venturi. All right. As it approaches that Venturi, I have one around here somewhere. Here it is. Right. As it approaches the Venturi, it's like this. But once it gets in here, the black balls just roll away, and they have no concussive value. They'll t touch each other, and they, it doesn't bother them. But the red ones, they boom, they explode like a bomb. They're white in this. So that's your fermions is the white, and your boson, carrier particle, is the black. Or they would also call them electron neutrinos, is the white ones, and muon neutrinos is the black ones. And we can see that the particles do spin to the right, which is what they say, and they are expanded here, contracted up here. That means it's slowing down. So not only have we seen it ex ex accelerate, which nobody's going to, who's going to say that's not accelerating? And the only reason it's accelerating is because of the Venturi. And coming out of the Venturi, you have the Cheryankov um, neutrino showers, electron showers. These are electron neutrino showers. And these have only what I believe is the negative value in them. And the black ball surrounds it. Let's take a look at that. All right, you remember the particles were coming in here. That's these. And as they get closer and closer, they start to get whiter and whiter and whiter. And then they get really white here. And then when they have to restrict for the Venturi, the black balls just walk away. They just roll away, right away. They stay, they're gone. Zero. Absolute zero blackness in here. They're all over the place here, see? And then they're all over the end. They come back and start to migrate back in. Now, are these the same balls or are these new balls? I don't know. I have no idea, but I, because now I think they might call this dark matter. This, look, see way out here? They're like coming back into the, into the stream of particles. Now they call that interference. It's not interference because this is single slit, but light spins. Some of it spins this way, and if it spins over the top, it comes this way. And I can prove that, because when Rod does this, we can see some go that way and some go this way, and they overlap. They actually overlap with each other. And you can see the brighter ones go one direction, and the dimmer ones go another direction. So one of them is, we're seeing closer to us, and one lower down. But I can see it spinning anyway. We got plenty of shots of that as well, which I already showed one, I think, the blue one. Now, this is is separation of charges as far as I'm concerned. I saw them together, you saw them together, now we see them separated. That's a boson and a fermion. That's the weak force and the strong force. That's the neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the electron neutrino. And these are the electron showers. And the black balls, as showed you, they, they don't have anything. You just see them, they just go away. And that's exactly what you see here. Okay, here it is right here. Muon neutrino, electron neutrino. That one comes in dead, the black ball. This one comes in and explodes. Weak force, strong force. Boson, fermion. Enchilada, enchilada. So, as you can see, light can speed up, light can slow down, light spins, light it can separate the carrier from the explosive portion, the boson from the fermion. They call that the neutrino. All the things they've been saying, I believe, are wrong. And I believe that all nucleuses are made of only electrons. So every one of these consists of whatever was a proton or a neutron is now 1837 or 1838 electrons. And you just keep building them up. And when you get up in here, there's just a bazillion of extra electrons we never considered before. That's why there's so much ability to make so many different things. We never considered it before. But where do you see what they show here? They show that the universe itself literally is as above, so below. You're going to see. Here it goes. Now they're probing the universe distances they've never seen before. Alright, so... Within cosmology we have a standard model. This model describes how on the larger scales we can see 
the universe evolves. So EVOS is designed to measure the three-dimensional positions of galaxies. One of now, here's what I would like to know. Where are we located in this expanding universe? I say it's not expanding. I say the light is slowing down. Because you could say, I showed it, you could speed it up, you could slow it down, there's no problem. It's just going to happen. Now, there's very few particles in space, but there is a lot of them. You know, there's a lot of them, but they're very sparse because there's a lot of space. Now, but every light that's out there, every star, every luminous body is spitting out electrons. If you can see it as a light, it is coming at you some electrons or photons, whatever you want to call them. They're back-to-back -back electrons in my world, which I have shown, I believe, already. Now, so where are we located? And are we way out here somewhere? And it's emanating from way in, in the center there, and we're way out on the arm or one of these things? I don't know. How did they actually do this, I would like to know. Because I'm only seeing a half. I'd like to see the whole ball and where we are. Are we out here? Are we... Who knows? If what they're showing here is what it is, it looks like we're the center of the universe because everything's going away. I'm sure it's going away this way, too. I don't know what they're really trying to show here. Are we the center of the universe in their eyes? To measure the expansion of the universe. It sure looks like it to me if that's where we are right here. Now, here's the key. It's called the Baron Acoustic Oscillation. Look at this. To me, those are nucleuses. These are spheres of influence, like I have been saying right along. These are spheres, regions of influence, and they push against each other. Now, they're showing them digging into it like they're molecularly locked together, and that is possible. I can't say not. But in my model, I just show this. Oh, hold on one second. All right, as particles come together, they are, uh, the particle is so small, it's like right in the dot of the center. But it owns this huge region around it. You never see it because it's just a region of magnetic influence, which you can see it is. Because if it's glowing here, it means it's pushing against something. That's what makes things glow, is push. I'm telling you, case closed. Now, if that is really what space looks like as above so below because I'm telling you that is the, what the nature of atoms is exactly like this is the core of the nucleus and it has a surrounding region of influence which is you know in, in the ether of space which this is what exists is too same thing here and <laughs> if that's true I mean the theory as far as I'm concerned is 100% valid now. And light does slow down, light speeds up, I showed that. These are literally electron uh, uh, um, atoms. All right, and maybe they are hooked together like this and that's how they bond and this is a H2O or whatever it is. And that, that hooks over here into some nitrogen or something. It's going to dig into the other guy's region to some degree. Now, I just thought they sort of flattened out, but they maybe just have to keep their symmetry the way it is, and, and then it just locks in and grabs, and the other one locks in and grabs. And that gives you molecular stability. Very well could be. A lot to think about now.